Taxi is not a good movie. This is relatively widely known as this 2004 so-called comedy became notorious for its lack of quality almost immediately after its release. The reviews were not kind. I mean, look at this quote. And this one. And this one's my personal favorite. It seems as though critics smelled blood in the water bringing out their reddest of red inks to tar and feather taxi. If you'll excuse my mixed metaphors. Audiences hated it too. So when it comes time to make an episode of a show called Does This Movie Suck? about a movie which audiences and critics alike have already made a decision, well, it seems like an empty mission. Yes. Yes, Taxi sucks. So the question, Does This Movie Suck? turns out to be uninteresting for a multitude of reasons. The more interesting question seems to be why. Why does this movie suck? The plot of Taxi is relatively simple, which leads to why the film sucks. When the story begins, we meet Belle Williams. She's played by Queen Latifah. She's finishing her last day as a New York City bike messenger. For her entire life, Belle has dreamed of being a New York City cab driver, and she's leaving the bike messenger gig to live out her dream. Belle's cab is no regular gas guzzler, though. No, this is a poorly CGI'd super cab. Fourteen minutes. Buggle up for safety, mother... <laughs> Meanwhile, Officer Andy Washburn is on his way to bust some bad guys for laundering money with gift cards. Washburn's played by Jimmy Fallon. When the bust goes sideways, we learn how good of a driver Andy isn't. All right, hands are 10 and 2. Okay, let's move the seat. Okay. Seat up. Okay. Like that. Uh, too close. Okay. Back Come more, on. back more, back okay. more. That's good. All right, well, mirror's checked. You can see back. You can see well, side. Washburn, maybe. Ah! Yeah, okay. I got it, dude. I got it, man. Hand signal, because I'm coming out. I'm coming out! They're, they're there. Go! 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 Rock and roll, dude! Yeah! Left without a car and wanting to prove himself as a cop, Andy enlists Bell's cab to get to a bank robbery he heard over the radio. Because Bell is such a great driver, they're the first to arrive at the scene, but the robbers get away. So Andy and Bell spend the next hour or so in an unwanted marriage of convenience as they hunt down the robbers. That's more or less the plot, so what went wrong? Let's just face facts here. Jimmy Fallon is not a strong comedic actor. The Fallon we know now as the host of The Tonight Show is not the Fallon we knew in 2004. In his six years at Saturday Night Live, Fallon was known more for laughing through his sketches than actually creating memorable characters. Taxi was his first leading role in a film. It was also his next to last. It seems as though the public wasn't clamoring for Fallon-led cinema. After a scene-stealing turn in Chicago, Queen Latifah started to do a lot, and I mean a lot, of movies. Fallon actually passed on Taxi after his first read of the script, but became interested again after Latifah signed on. She's fine in the movie. She does street smart really well, but she turns up the sweetness to 11 when something more gritty might have worked out better. Speaking of that... Taxi is a remake of the 1998 French film of the same name. The French original is widely regarded by critics and audiences alike. It's actually spawned three sequels over the years. The original is rare and hard to get in the States. If you can find it, the film is pretty expensive, but just look at this trailer. This film seems violent and gritty, something the American film certainly is not. I'm going to have to make some assumptions here based on this trailer and from what I've read on the internet, but the French original seems more complex and entertaining even in text form than the remake. Why? 
The American Taxi is very straightforward in its plotting. As an audience, we see everything. There's no mystery to how the bank robbers are operating. We're shown their heists. We're shown their getaways. So the audience is left wanting to see our main characters catch up to where we are as an audience. As a rule, police work is only interesting if the audience and the police have the same information. If the audience has more information, or in this case, all the information, then the audience tunes out if the story isn't compelling enough. Taxi quickly becomes a why done it versus a who done it. The best bank heist movies are almost always told from the robber's point of view, so a simple film like Taxi needs some mystery, something to keep the audience hooked. Add to this that the American remake seems to get the main points of the original, but misses their connections to the larger story. Take this scene for example. Freeze, police officer! I'm gonna need a car for a fist! In the original film, this crash sequence is one of the reasons why one of the robberies is a success. It's a huge plot point. But in our American remake, this is a one-off scene, which is fine if there's a punchline. This is a comedy, after all. But like most of the scenes, there's no punchline here. Fallon's character just sheepishly walks away. This movie feels like the writers watched the French original without the subtitles and just mimicked what they saw. Even the characters aren't right. In the original film, the police character seems more overconfident, while the taxi driver seems more like the hard-edged Jason Statham type. Taxi uses the idiosyncrasies of Fallon's character as fodder for the film's comedy, but it doesn't work. Scene after scene fall flat, partly because neuroses by itself isn't funny, but mostly because Andy's tics have no payoff. Here's an example. In the film, Andy is a bad driver. Buckle up for safety, everybody. Hard to do it with my holster on. Okay, we're good. Good, wipers work. 10 and 2, mirrors work. And here we go. Oh, damn. Oh! Oh! That's why you got bumpers, kids. That's why you got bumpers, kids. That's why you got bumpers. You trying to kill me? I'm not a perfect driving robot. I know. At least this has a payoff. Andy successfully drives to the film's big conclusion, although that ending isn't earned. At least Taxi tries to make this payoff, but Andy has numerous character ticks that fail to lead anywhere. He lives next to his mother. His boss is his ex-girlfriend. He's a terrible cop. And most annoyingly, Andy fiddles with his firearm throughout the entire movie. Whoa, yo, man, be careful with that. Careful don't bag the bag guy. No way. All right, let's do this thing, baby. Don't get my burb on. What's happening to me? Hey, so, so what would... Washburn. You stay out of this, all right? Whatever you got planned, don't do it. I don't got a plan. A good film, a good screenplay would use these character ticks to its advantage. Andy cocking his gun constantly would pay off by saving the day. Here's an example. Oh, think about it. Andy with a blade, draft a man off, burn you the trophy wife. He's connected. Why do you think there's a rifle above the bar? Because the pub's called the Winchester. Exactly. <laughs> this is Shaun of the Dead, directed by Edgar Wright. It came out the same year as Taxi. In this film, our main characters, Shaun, played by Simon Pegg, and Ed, played by Nick Frost, decide to head to their favorite pub to wait out a zombie outbreak. The characters decide to head to the pub because it's the only safety they've ever known. But Ed is operating under the assumption that the shotgun mounted above the bar is real. I still don't actually understand why we are going to the Winchester. Because it's a pub, it's safe, it's secure. I know it's there. What makes it so secure? Because it's got big heavy doors and, and dead balls. You've been to a lock-in. And there's a rifle above the bar. I would think that's deactivated. Surely. It's not, I'm telling you. John's connected, Big Al says so. It, well, Big Al also says dogs can't look up. They can't. Oh, can't they? No, they can't. Of course they can. Are you sure? Yes, I, look, I the pub is the right place to go, okay? Everything is going to be fine, I promise. Ed is an idiot, and I'll talk more about that character type in a moment, but this is more than just a throwaway line. It's a carrot the screenplay dangles for us to forget, just in time for... Why don't you just shoot him, man? Ed, for the last time... I fucking knew it! Ed's dialogue, Ed's character ticks, pay off. Taxi is a series of carrots, a series of setups with no payoff. A good screenplay would work all of these elements together, but this film just leaves them there. They're just things to pad the running time. The payoff is that Andy is neurotic, 
but neurotic isn't funny by itself. Andy's neuroses need to help him find the robbers in some way, or it's all for nothing. Throughout the film, Andy is only confident about one thing, that he's right about the robbery suspects. We'll call Fallon's character the neurotic, well-intentioned hero. He's right. He knows he's right. He's just waiting for everyone else to acknowledge it. Let's unfairly compare Taxi to this. Okay, what about this guy? Ask yourself, why has he got his hat pulled down like that? He's fuck ugly. Or he doesn't want you to see his face. Because he's fuck ugly. This is Hot Fuzz. It's also directed by Edgar Wright. It came out in 2007, three years after Taxi. In a lot of ways, Hot Fuzz is everything Taxi could have been if the film was serious about being good. The character dynamics between Simon Pegg's character, super cop Nicholas Angel, and Nick Frost's not-so-super-cop Danny Butterman seem to be more in line with what the original Taxi wanted to do. Like in Shaun of the Dead, Frost's character has a lot of ticks, but Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright, who wrote the screenplay, have these ticks pay off and help solve the case. But let's talk specifically more about Frost's character Danny Butterman. If Fallon's character in Taxi is the neurotic, well-intentioned hero, then Butterman is the overconfident, well-intentioned idiot. He wants to do a good job, he wants to be a good police officer, and he wants to impress Pegg's character, but he's really bad at all these things. From what I've read about the French film, Butterman is more like the original character than Fallon's Washburn turned out to be, and in a way, he's an easy character to believe. The overconfident, well-intentioned idiot only needs one or two moments of brilliance to completely pay off the character. Washburn needs his partner, his boss, his mother, and the entire police force to believe in him to complete his character arc. And when we zoom out and look at the entire film, Hot Fuzz is a movie about Peg's angel becoming a bit more like Frost's Butterman, and vice versa. Taxi is a film about Washburn becoming, if only momentarily, completely like Latifah's Bell. It's certainly not an impossible character arc to complete, but it certainly takes time and more skill to pull off and Taxi doesn't have that much skill to make this transformation believable. Okay, what else is in the film? Taxi attempts to be an action comedy. The comedy is just not there, but how's the action? Well, the biggest problem with Taxi's action is in concept. The film takes place in New York City. The film pretends to have these super high-speed chases, but it's in a city that's known for gridlock. So the action's not exciting because of the setting, but it's also not exciting because of the way the film is shot. The set pieces are shot with long lenses and feel disconnected from a chase scene that should have danger lurking around every corner. There's a lot of cross-traffic and pedestrians in New York City, things we don't see in this movie. By the way it's shot, the film feels more like this. This is the notorious Ballistic X vs. Sever. Along with Taxi, Ballistic may have the most boring chase sequences ever, and both for the same reasons. The filmmaker has to make a chase sequence exciting. A filmmaker has to use their craft to make this work. Let's compare this to this. This is Death Proof, directed by Quentin Tarantino. It came out in 2007, three years after Taxi. Now I know what you're thinking, this is an unfair comparison. Death Proof is one of the greatest car chase movies of the last 20 years, if not of all time in my opinion. But I use this film for one point. This is a chase sequence at its most simplistic. It's two cars in the middle of nowhere. There's no pedestrians, there's no other cars. But Tarantino uses a multitude of different camera shots to make the sequence exciting. We have long shots to show scale. We're inside the car, we're outside the car, we're trailing behind the car, we're in front of the car. The result is heart pounding. Our adrenaline starts flowing and we're caught up in the chase. One more thing to note. All of this is real. Unlike this. Seriously, it was 2004, but those green screen effects are terrible. No one is falling for that. I mean, look at this effect. That is awful. There's something about the realness of an actual car chase that gets the audience invested. 
When we're taken out of the chase because of a bad green screen effect, it just kills the entire thing. I feel like I'm comparing apples to oranges here, so let's just take a look at this. This is Dr. No. It came out in 1962. From a filmmaking perspective, Taxi has more in common with James Bond's first adventure than this. This is Casino Royale. It was released in 2006, two years after Taxi. As an audience, we know that Daniel Craig's James Bond is not actually in the car, but because of the realness in which the scene is shot, the real nature of the car, the texture of the scene, when this happens, <laughs> our heart skips, our breath gets caught in our throat. Is James all right? Now watch this scene again. Nothing. We feel nothing. Taxi is not a good movie. This is relatively widely known as this 2004 so-called comedy became notorious for its lack of quality almost instantly after its release. The critics smelled blood in the waters, but it's not without warrant. The screenplay, a mess. The comedy, non-existent. The actors, lacking. It seems unfair to pile on a movie like Taxi, comparing it to other, better films from the era. But in looking at what other films do so well, we can start to see why Taxi went so wrong. Only then can we ask the question, 